Dara, the city where the Syrian uprising and peaceful protests began. The Syrian people united in their cry for freedom, dignity and the fall of the regime. After Russia's reconciliation efforts in 2018, Dara has never been fully secured. Now, the Assad regime in Iran has besieged the city once again, in an attempt to force the residents of Dara to submit. Join us as we speak with Mohammed Abdel Hadi, a Syrian activist from the city of Dara, and we will discuss the recent developments on the ground. Join us on the Levant 24 podcast to hear more. Assalamu alaikum, I'm your host Khaled, and welcome back to the Levant 24 podcast live from Idlib, Syria. My guest this week is Mohammed Abdel Hadi. He's a Syrian activist and graduate from the University of Damascus with a degree in English literature. He hails from the province of Dara, where just recently there have been military escalations between the Syrian regime and the residents of Dara al Balad. Jazakallah khair for the opportunity to speak with you today, brother. Thanks a lot uh, for having me in your show. You're welcome, you're welcome. Uh, we all know the Syrian conflict is one of the most complex arenas, and it's been that way since the beginning. What we're witnessing now in Dara is no exception to that. Uh, just to give our listeners a rundown, uh, our guest Muhammad was born and raised in Dara, uh, and you were involved in the uprising since the beginning in yeah. uh, early 2011. Yeah, that's right. Uh, obviously, until you were forcefully displaced by Assad and regime in uh, 2018. Yeah, that's right. I'm interested to know, and our listeners are interested to know, what inspired you to become uh, involved in these peaceful protests at the start? Uh, you know, uh, the Arab Spring started in 2011 in Tunisia and Egypt. Uh, when I saw uh, those scenes of freedom, I was uh, so enthusiastic, uh, mm. so excited to see these scenes in our country, Syria. Yeah. You know, uh, Syria is under uh, Al Ba'ath uh, rule. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a totalitarian rule. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, the one family rule, mm. Al Assad family. Okay. You know, the father of Al Assad, and and after him, his son. Bashar. Syria uh, for them uh, was like a farm. Mm. So uh, I was so enthusiastic to see uh, the scenes of a freedom in our country, Syria. Did many Syrians at that time have the same uh, opinion, same feeling? Because it's interesting how you describe it as a farm. You know, uh, some uh, some people were uh, uh, enthusiastic. Some uh, uh, some people were angry, and mm. some uh, uh, were feeling uh, it's not so good. We are uh, we are living uh, uh, a good life. We don't want to make problems. Uh, we have electricity, we food. Yeah. Uh, why should we take? Uh, oh, sorry. Why we should change this regime? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, after a while, a lot of Syrians. Uh, participated in mm. the peaceful uh, mobilization, let mm. me say that. You know, the first stage of the revolution was peaceful. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. But, but because of the regime's brutality and severity in dealing with the Syrian people, uh, a lot of, uh, of the Syrians were forced to take up arms mm. to defend mm. themselves. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's interesting, you, you mentioned you know, the brutality of 2011, and we're seeing that now in 2021. We've been uh, reading reports and witnessing video footage of the military campaign headed by Assad against the people who resist him in Dara. And what makes matters complicated is there seems to be a clear Iranian participation in this campaign. Uh, the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said it is the most violent and broadest clashes in Dara since it came under regime control in 2018. Can you give our listeners uh, an update on the current situation on the ground in Dara? Uh, actually, now there is uh, an announced truce between uh, the regime forces and uh, the resi residents of of Dara, mm -hmm. and there is negotiations between the two parties. Okay. Today, the Russian general who is uh, who is in charge of Dara uh, province mm -hmm. promised the Central Committee of Dara to take uh, their uh, demands to Damascus mm -hmm. to to his leaders in mm -hmm. Damascus. We are waiting. Mm -hmm. But do the, do the residents of Dara, because look, we saw previously, for example, the de-escalation zones. Yeah. Uh, and it became clear that it was a tactic, a military tactic of Russia yeah. to basically freeze yes. different areas of uh, resistance, pockets of resistance in Syria, while they focus their forces one by one. 
and even uh, as far as I know, the agreement was in the in the uh, in, in the reconciliation agreement. One of the points was that the resistant forces and the residents they get to keep their light weapons, but any heavy weapons, artilleries, and things they have to uh, hand them in. So it seems now that if Assad's requesting and and forcing. Uh, militarily that they have to surrender their, their small weapons, it seems like a, that they're breaching the agreement that they made in that's 2018. Right, that's right. Uh, you know, after uh, the fall of the South in 2018, uh, uh, one of the terms uh, was uh, to surrender the heavy weapons. Mm. And the fighters at that time uh, could keep their light weapons. Yeah. But now the uh, uh, regime uh, breached this agreement mm -hmm. and he it asks uh, the residents of Dara to surrender uh, their light weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, the people there say uh, these weapons are uh, uh, part of our traditions and customs. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we are tribes and clans and this is uh, a part of our culture mm -hmm. uh, and we can't do that. Yeah. Uh, and you know that after that, uh, heavy clashes erupted between uh, the regime forces and uh, its paramilitaries mm -hmm. and uh, the local uh, residents of Dara. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, the round on Thursday was good for the residents. Mm. Uh, uh, they could capture uh, dozens of uh, uh, the regime fighters. Yeah, yeah. Even reports um, saying at yeah. least forty, uh, more uh, than forty, even yeah. uh, regime forces. Um, it was yeah. a, it was a good round, but uh, you know this is <laughs> this is a long battle. Yeah. Uh, and uh, here we can't ignore the suffering of the civilians. Mm. The civilians are now in a dire situation. Yeah, I mean over a month they're of under, besiegement. They're under yeah. shelling. There is no uh, medical uh, 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 supplies, mm. there is no food, no clean water, and you know that uh, now uh, we are in, uh, in, in August. Mm. And Peak of uh, summer, yeah. yeah. And this is the hottest month uh, of the year here in Syria. Mm. And you can imagine uh, the amount of suffering uh, the people there are suffering. Mm. Mm. It's, it's clear because the residents there they've been besieged for more than a month yeah and then the regime started using artillery uh, and mortar fires on civilian homes yes and now they you, we see the videos we see the fourth division we see the, yeah. the armored division we see tanks yes. mechanized divisions many civilians surrounding the city many civilians ready were to killed by yeah. this shilling by, by this bombardment no. yeah the regime argues that the, their military action is basically a response to the assassinations and the current situation or security situation in their areas. And they're accusing these uh, local reconciled residents of carrying out these attacks. Uh, Dara uh, al Balad, uh, this uh, huge district has about 50,000 uh, people. Mm. Okay. And uh, saying that um, this huge amount of people are terrorists and mm. they uh, should be punished for uh, assassinations, uh, this is um, unacceptable. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, these assassinations happen because of the bad security situation. Mm. The, the regime can't uh, control or uh, administer uh, the area well. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is one of his or of its responsibilities uh, to uh, to stop uh, these these actions. Mm -hmm. All right. The last thing we we're talking about was uh, well, what the locals uh, in Dara, what do they think about the current economic situation uh, in the area since the regime uh, regained control of uh, Dara in 2018. Uh, here uh, I'll talk about the economic situation uh, in Syria, mm. in general, not only uh, in Dara. True. You know that uh, uh, the Syrian lira has uh, lost a lot of its value recently. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, and you know the the huge amount of corruption in the, the regime mm. areas, okay? Uh, and uh, this uh, affected uh, the ability of the Syrian citizen uh, uh, to provide his living. Mm. Yeah. 
and uh, the economic situation uh, in Dar al Balad, uh, I think uh, uh, it's more difficult. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, they're under siege. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when an, an area is uh, an, uh, is under siege, uh, the price uh, of, of the food supplies are too high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So their situation is so difficult now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Back to the topic of uh, assassinations, um, because it's it's clear since Dara fell, there's been routine tit for tat bombings and assassinations in the area. And if we look at the statistics uh, of assassinations of regime personnel, I believe it was close to like an assassination attempt every second or third day or something like this. What do you what do you think about this? The the whole topic of assassination. I think uh, uh, the majority uh, of these operations are uh, against the regime uh, loyalists. Mm. Um, I think uh, uh, these uh, operations are uh, are committed uh, by uh, uh, anti-regime uh, fighters. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, look, uh, the identity of those uh, people. Uh, to be to be honest, the identity of those fighters are not are not known. Mm. To be precise, uh, at this point. Yeah. But uh, the majority of these uh, operations are against uh, the regime uh, loyalists. Loyalists, yeah. Uh, what does that tell you? But I mean, you know, the the economic situation is dire. The, uh, the assassination attempts every other day. And it seems clear that Assad really doesn't have control in those yeah. areas. And it seems that the residents, uh, they don't want Assad. These, uh, let me tell you something. The, I think these, uh, these conditions uh, are like a trigger. Mm. Okay. Uh, uh, it can uh, make people move. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Reject this, uh, this reality, this, this, uh, 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 this situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people uh, thought when uh, uh, the regime took uh, the, uh, took control of the area, uh, everything will be uh, would be improved. Yeah, yeah. Electricity, food supplies, uh, mm-hmm. uh, water supply, but uh, the reality uh, was uh, was different. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the situations uh, uh, there are deteriorating dramatically mm, and the situation is so bad there yeah a lot of people i know uh, a lot of people who want uh, to to sell their lands their homes to come to the liberated areas in the north mm. uh, if you want to uh, travel okay uh, from the south uh, of syria to the north uh, you should pay at least one thousand mm. dollars to be smuggled uh, to, 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 to northern yeah, Syria, yeah, yeah, to, to to come here because the situations here in the liberated areas are um, are better than the situations mm. uh, there uh, in the south and in Damascus itself. Mm, subhanallah. Do you believe that uh, this is what Assad is trying to achieve? I mean, it's happened many other times where Assad tries to displace the people that are against him, and this is obviously a war crime. Uh, but we see it time and time again, besiegement, slowly, slowly, uh, you know, artillery fire, barrel bombs, airstrikes, military offences, putting so much pressure on the civilians. Like you said, yeah, homes are being bombed until the civilian just surrenders and says, Khalas, yeah, and he sent me away. I think uh, this bad economic situation is beyond uh, Assad's control. Mm. Because you know that there is uh, a movement of a protest and uh, and his stronghold uh, yeah, in the yeah, coastal yeah. areas. In Ladakhi, yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, correct. Uh, Rami Makhlouf was uh, prominent. Yeah, we saw the videos. Yeah. Uh, Rami Makhlouf, uh, his relative, uh, they have they have some problems. They uh, uh, Bashar wants money from him, and he yeah, refuses yeah. to pay. And uh, he's and some reports say uh, Makhlouf now is under house arrest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Swala Dara has a special place in the heart for everyone who supports the revolution. You know. Uh, it's, the, it's the cradle of the Syrian revolution. Yeah, okay? yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're <laughs> right. I mean, Dara, it's Dara is where the uprising began. Yeah, that's it's where right. the peaceful protests began, yeah. and it's where Dara 
uh, it's in Dara where Asad and his regime started to kill innocent protesters who are only demanding their freedom and dignity and they were even demanding uh, to have a better economic situation as well you know I think uh, uh, when the revolution uh, started it wasn't about uh, uh, improving uh, the economic situation mm-hmm. I, uh, this is this is not the main uh, reason you know yeah, please go on. Uh, the famous incident when some children were arrested after writing some slogans on on the wall of their school mm. and uh, they were uh, arrested by the security forces and uh, when their parents went to Atif Najib mm. he's uh, a notorious security man mm-hmm. he's a relative of Bashar uh, when they went there to uh, release their children uh, he uh, insulted uh, insulted them and humiliated them so uh, this was the spark Yeah, yeah. That uh, uh, erupted yeah. uh, the Syrian revolution. It's about mm-hmm. something about uh, dignity. Mm-hmm. When mm-hmm. I ask you to do me a favor and you refuse this and you and you humiliate me, mm-hmm. uh, this is uh, something uh, I can't accept easily. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And barakallah uh, fiq. You know, you, you remind me of the story of Hamza al Khatib. Yeah. You know, and I've I've mentioned this story before. Uh, and I'll never forget it because really it changed my life forever. Uh, and, and just for our listeners to, to, to understand the story of Hamza Al-Khatib, he was a uh, 13-year-old schoolboy from Dara. Yeah. And at the beginning of the Ar- Arab Spring and the peaceful protests, like you mentioned, Barak al uh, some school children started to write on the walls yeah. uh, that they wanted freedom. And, and the 12, 13-year-old children. That's right. And shortly after, Hamza was kidnapped by Assad's uh, Shabih or right. thugs. And yeah. wallahi, they, they tortured this innocent boy to death. He was burnt, stabbed, yeah. even his private parts were mutilated. Yeah. And after that, they, and this this just confirms what you're saying to me is true about um, uh, humiliating. After this, they, they sent the body back to the parents. Yeah. And this was a message to all those yeah. who wanted to resist Assad yes. and the regime. Yes, yes. Uh, actually, uh, Hamza al-Khatib was killed when he tried uh, to help uh, the besieged people of Dara. Mm. Uh, when uh, Dara, uh, I think uh, in, in, in April okay. in 2011, was under siege by the regime forces, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of people from the rural areas, from the countryside, gathered themselves and tried to break Uh, this plo- uh, siege, this yeah. siege, uh, a lot of people uh, were killed. Mm. Ama, one of them is Hamza Al Khatib, who was kidnapped mm. by the security forces, who was tortured severely. Yeah, uh, yeah horrific, a lot horrific, of really. us, these uh, horrible pictures yeah, of a pictures, child video. who was beaten and tortured oh. severely. I think uh, uh, this incident of uh, of Hamza mm. uh, was uh, was a spark, really. Uh, was uh, and symbolic. Yeah, yeah, it was symbolic. Uh, yeah, it show you how uh, show you how brutal and severe mm. this regime uh, is. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was clear, you know, you know, the Assad regime was basically saying, young or old, woman or child, yeah. doesn't matter who you are, if you want to stand up against him, this is yeah. what will happen to you. That's right. And uh, and Subhanallah, really is. Uh, It's a, it really affected me deeply. And then many, many, everyone, That's basically right. everyone, Yanni, subhanAllah. So it's clear that Dara, it seems since the beginning, that Dara has been constantly under siege, you know, whether it was in uh, the early days, like you mentioned, uh, the times of uh, Hamza al-Khatib, uh, whether it was uh, the, before 2018, and even now, it seems to be a common common tactic of Assad to besiege yeah. the people and the residents there. Yeah, that's why right. Why do you believe that Dara is uh, important for Assad? Because it, it seems that it's very important for him to always focus on it. The first thing, uh, uh, I think uh, yeah. its importance arises uh, from the fact that uh, Dara is the cradle of the revolution mm-hmm. of the Syrian revolution symbolic yeah. when you yeah when you control Dara uh, uh, this is an example mm. okay uh, okay uh, th- this is Dara uh, 
the first uh, city uh, which uh, uh, defied me and I can control the city. So mm. uh, it's better for you uh, to be silent. Mm. Yeah. Another important uh, reality is uh, the location of Dara, the yeah. geographic location of Dara. Sure. Uh, it's a border province. You have Jordan mm -hmm. and uh, occupied Palestine or Israel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, this is so important. Uh, uh, Hafez al-Assad could uh, connect okay, its yeah, regime yeah. Uh, with the international order. Mm. Okay. Uh, one of its rules, okay, to be a guard of uh, for Israel. the borders of Israel. Yeah. Uh, I'm from uh, Dara. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, once we went, uh, we went on a picnic mm -hmm. to, uh, to the border areas mm -hmm. after taking a permission. You can, you can mm. imagine, you're a resident of this area, and if you want to reach uh, a close area, okay, mm -hmm. a neighboring place, uh, you need a permission. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, the idea with the, the, the Syrian regime. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like uh, a guard mm -hmm. for the Israeli or the Palestinian borders. Mm -hmm. uh, this this led me to talk about the fact uh, why uh, do the international community or why do uh, the superpowers want this regime? Yeah. Yeah. Because Israel wants this regime protecting its interests yeah. for uh, more than 40 years, mm. no uh, single bullet was fired uh, on the borders. Mm. And this is so important for them. Yeah. Yeah. Do you believe that's the case now that Assad has basically uh, brought in Iranian influence in, 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 into Damascus because Iranians presence is very strong in Damascus and, and even areas of Aleppo and obviously near the Abu Kamal and, and these areas. Yes. And Israel's clear, they see Iran as a direct threat to them. Yeah. So what do you think the situation will be now that Assad uh, regimed areas in Damascus is, is highly, you could say, occupied by Iranian, uh, Iranian forces or Iranian militias? Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Syrian revolution started, started in 2011. Mm -hmm. And in 2013, uh, when the regime was about to collapse, yeah. the Iranians intervened uh, uh, directly yeah. Yeah, by true. sending men and money. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, and uh, since uh, uh, they're still sending their men and uh, money, yeah, okay? yeah. I think the Iranians now are a burden. Mm. On the regime's shoulders. Mm. Okay, you see this. See this yeah. power struggle between yeah. Russia and Iran. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You see it uh, he, often. Uh, the regime wants to uh, get rid of of the Iranian uh, influence and dominance. Mm. Now I think, mm. but uh, it can't. Mm -hmm. the, because of the heavy presence of the Iranian, the Iranian uh, uh, now uh, can uh, control uh, leading position uh, in the Syrian uh, in mm. the Syrian regime. Mm. They're, they're, they have their men there. Yeah, I I think uh, the Iranian the Iranians now are uh, a burden mm. on the, the regime's shoulders. Mm. Uh, a burden uh, the regime can't uh, get rid of. Mm -hmm. I think what's interesting that maybe we can discuss now is uh, Iran's presence in this military offensive on the residents of Dara. And it seems clear that you know, Iran's interest is to try and stabilize themselves more in that region and become closer to Israel so they can put more pressure on Israel. Um, and it seems that Russia... They're trying to uh, negotiate with the, with the groups to there, compromise. but it seems that to compromise, yeah, exactly to compromise. Yeah. But really, it's Iran that's pushing this uh, this initiative. Yes. So uh, yeah, what do you what do you say about this? Actually, uh, this campaign uh, is led by the fourth 
the fourth division of Maher al-Assad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh, this uh, division is uh, is backed by Iran. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Iran uh, wants to reach uh, the Jordanian borders mm. uh, to put pressures uh, on the Jordanians. And there is uh, uh, one thing that's so important, uh, which is the smuggling of drugs. Yeah, yeah. We know that uh, uh, the regime now is in a, in a bad economic situation. Mm-hmm. It's uh, uh, it's about to declare its uh, bankruptcy. Mm. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, smuggling drugs uh, will provide some uh, some money mm. for it uh, to stay alive. Yeah. Uh, so uh, reaching the borders is so important Strategic, for yeah. uh, str- it's strategically important for the Iranians mm. uh, to pressure the Jordanians, and it's so important for the regime as well. Uh, it's a route of uh, smuggling. Mm. They, uh, uh, the regime can uh, demand down. Yeah, yeah. I think the the, the border crossing, the sea border crossing in uh, yeah in in uh, with Jordan and Syria, it's, uh, like you mentioned, it's, it's very strategic. And what do you think Jordan's uh, reaction, or how would Jordan respond to this? Because obviously, you've got uh, the mock operations from the military operation command in Jordan which is US uh, think, backed yeah I think the Jordanians now are uh, are suffering uh, a lot because of uh, the bad economic situation there mm. uh, and uh, uh, opening uh, Nasib crossing is, is so important for them yeah uh, and we heard about uh, the Jordanian king uh, visit to uh, Washington last week. Yeah. Uh, some uh, sources said uh, he asked Biden, the American president, uh, to lift or to stop working on uh, Caesar Act mm. now because mm. uh, it fixed him directly. Yeah. The, 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 the Jordanians uh, are uh, in a bad economic situation and uh, opening the borders and this economic, let me say economic relations with the regime uh, will improve the the Jordanian economy. Mm. I think uh, we have a, a few interesting days and weeks ahead of us. Yeah, uh, that's right. And that, that region is, uh, it, it's very important, even for, for us and, the, and the, the, the free people in northern uh, Syria. The fact that the residents and the people of Dar al-Balad uh, are still uprising and they're still standing firm after all this, all that they've been through. That's right. Uh, it, it, it's really inspiring. That's uh, right. Even when we, we saw on the, uh, the, the 10th year anniversary of the revolution, we saw the people uh, protesting and, and, yeah, and demonstrating. And, and demonstrating yes. and well, even the, the elections, as far as I know, the people of uh, Dar al Balad, they didn't participate in the, yeah, in the yeah. elections. Yes. Uh, so, really, it's, uh, it's clear that. Yeah, and he, Assad's not wanted there, uh, as in many other areas. Yes. Uh, one last question, and maybe okay. we can wrap up with this, inshallah. It's very hot in this room. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, what do you believe the end game or the result of uh, this, this campaign operation is on the people of uh, Dara? I think uh, this campaign will fail. Hmm. Uh, we know uh, when we talk about the power balance, mm. okay, uh, it's against uh, the, the people there, the, yeah. the civilians there, uh, the residents of Dara. Uh, so important, I think, and so emotional when, when the regime attacked Dara. A lot of areas uh, uh, supported uh, the people in Dar al Balad, mm. uh, mm. and th- they uh, attacked. Yeah. The regime forces, yeah. uh, they took checkpoints, yeah. uh, they had uh, dozens of captives. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw one video uh, yeah. of the bus, we saw uh, the bus full so, of regime soldiers. So uh, we see uh, yeah. this, is, this spirit of unity, mm. okay? There is something uh, in Dar'a uh, which we call uh, Faz'a. Mm. When uh, when uh, when your brother when uh, when your relative uh, is suffering, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, uh, you should help him. Yeah. You should support him. Loyalty, okay. Yeah. Uh, I think this is the most important thing uh, there now. The spirit of unity mm. between uh, the, the residents of Dara yeah. and. Uh, the, 
uh, here I'm talking about uh, the people of Dara city and uh, uh, the residents in the rural areas. Mm. Okay, I, I've just told you that this is something emotional. Mm. Okay, uh, uh, this is something. Uh, let me say uh, uh, here I'm, I'm, I'm talking about uh, uh, the Syrian revolution yeah. in, in general. When uh, you think everything has uh, has finished. Mm. The, the regime succeeded uh, in defeating the revolution. Uh, something strange happens. Uh, this is what what's happening now in Dara. Yeah, yeah. Dara. Uh, all when when Dara fell in 2018, mm. we thought that uh, thought it was the uh, everything yeah. uh, game is over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But. Um, I, I've just told you that there's something strange yeah, uh, yeah, about the yeah. Syrian revolution. And we can feel it here. I think this revolution is guarded by Allah's providence. Yeah. Uh, and this is uh, this is the most important thing about the Syrian revolution. Jazakallah khair. And you really, you, you feel it here in, in, in the northern areas of uh, Idlib and, uh, and, and, and the countryside of Aleppo. You really feel that the people there with the people of Dara, like you, like you mentioned, yeah. the unity the spirit and the will to continue and not giving up because at yes. the end of the day uh, they're going to try day and night to try and break the will and once the will is destroyed and you've lost hope you know this is when you when you lose but i only see it uh, getting uh, increasing uh, and inshallah we we send our prayers and our duas to the people of dara and yeah. uh, and and our hearts are with them and uh, inshallah yeah and we hope that allah keeps them firm and, uh, uh, gives uh, well, one last word um, uh, your effort, efforts uh, are highly appreciated <laughs> thanks for uh, for having me on your show uh, I hope that uh, one day we will meet uh, in Dara inshallah I look forward uh, to it brother thanks a lot <laughs> I really appreciate your time <laughs> 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 <laughs>